Hello again. I hope you all had a good Christmas. In church life, we are still celebrating the Christmas season. Today is called Epiphany Sunday, and it is the day that we talk about the journey of the wise men, or magi, or kings, to visit and present gifts to the baby Jesus. It's an amazing story found in the Matthew, in the book of Matthew, chapter 2. I'm going to be summarizing the story in just a few moments, but after the video, I'd really encourage you to read it for yourselves, as it really is a fascinating story. You will have noticed that we sometimes say kings and sometimes call them wise men, other times call them magi. For most of the talk today, I'm going to refer to them as magi because that word seems to kind of include both the idea of uh, kings and wise men. Before I tell the story, I'll be stopping the video to set up my magi figurines so that you can look at these while I'm talking. These figurines from my nativity scene represent what the magi may have looked like, but of course we don't know for sure. Let's begin by talking about what we think we know about the Magi. We're pretty sure they studied the stars, and when they noticed a new star in the sky, they followed it from their eastern countries right to Judea, which is where Jerusalem and Bethlehem were located. They somehow had heard about the Jewish prophecies that said a new king would be born for the Jewish people, so we can assume they were well-educated. We also assume that they were rich, because of the gifts they offered the baby, gold and expensive spices and oils with exotic names like frankincense and myrrh. And we know that they were searchers, not just satisfied with just hearing about this new king, but keenly interested in seeing him and paying respect to him in person. So the Magi, based on what they knew of old prophecies, headed to Judea and ended up in Jerusalem. It sounds like they created quite a stir in the city, another clue that they were probably very wealthy and majestic looking. And even though we usually see pictures where there are just three kings on camels, it is more likely that they traveled in a large caravan along with their servants, so this arrival in Jerusalem would have sparked a lot of interest. The Magi went to King Herod's palace as clearly they expected a new king would be born in a palace. When they asked Herod about this new baby who was going to be king, Herod called his advisors and had them check through the Old Testament prophecies to see where the new king was to be born. The advisors said it would be in Bethlehem. So Herod shared this information with the Magi and instructed them to go look for the baby and then report back to him. What the wise men did not know at that time was that Herod was a wicked and jealous man, so they agreed to this plan. Once they left the palace, we are told the star reappeared, and the Magi followed it right to the house in Bethlehem where they presented their gifts to the baby Jesus. They were about to return to Jerusalem when an angel of God warned them in a dream that Herod wanted to kill the baby because he was jealous and afraid that this new king would take his power and his throne. So the Magi followed the angel's instructions and returned to their homes without going to report to Herod in Jerusalem. And Joseph, Jesus' earthly father, was also warned by an angel that Herod would be searching for the baby and had plans to kill all male children under the age of two. The angel told Joseph to take his little family to Egypt, where they would be safe from the cruelty of King Herod. Joseph obeyed and immediately left for Egypt. The family stayed there until King Herod himself had died, and it was safe for them to return to their home in Nazareth. In this story of the Magi, we have seen beautiful moments of worship and love, but also horrible moments of jealousy and anger. We see how the determination of the Magi to find this baby in order to worship him is in contrast with Herod's determination 
to destroy the threat to his power. We've also seen God's power and Mary and Joseph's obedience to God's instructions. And I think maybe we can sometimes see ourselves in some of the story too. The Magi in the story are searching, just as we ourselves are sometimes searching in life and not always sure, sure what we are searching for or what paths we need to take. Sometimes, like the Magi, we take wrong paths in life. You see, at some point, it seems that the Magi quit following the star, and we're not really sure why. Maybe as they got closer to Jerusalem, they got overconfident, assuming that a royal baby would have to be born in a palace, and so they quit looking up to get direction from the star. We do that sometimes in our own lives. We start thinking we don't need God's guidance anymore, and sometimes, like the Magi, we end up in the wrong place, making wrong decisions. In order to get back on track, the Magi had to get help from people who studied the old prophecies. So the guidance for the Magi was found in the scriptures, or what we now call the Bible. When we start taking wrong paths, it's always good to go back to studying our Bibles to find out what directions God wants to give us. So as you are growing up and making decisions, it might be a good idea to think about the story of the Magi. They lost their focus on that guiding star, but through perseverance and a willingness to seek out and listen to the Word of God, they were able to get back on track once again. And that's how they ended up in the glorious presence of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. There are a couple of verses from Proverbs that I would like to leave with you today. This is from the Good News Translation, Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Never rely on what you think you know. Remember the Lord in everything you do, and he will show you the right way. I hope you have a good week, and all the best to you as you res resume your studies.